In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. This is my day. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. It is Tuesday, the 25th of July, 2023, 16th week in ordinary time. And today we celebrate the feast of St. James Apostle. This feast is about James, the son of Zebedee, and the brother of John, the apostle and evangelist. He was present with Peter and John at the special miracles worked by the Lord at his transfiguration and in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was the first of the apostles to be put to death, as we find in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, around the year 42. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following Daily Bread members. Dr. Aretha Samuel, celebrating her birthday today from Lagos, Nigeria, takes for us the first reading. Florence Matongo, celebrating her 60th birthday today from Harare, Zimbabwe, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Philemon Ahibo from Kaduna Archdiocese in Nigeria. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who consecrated the first fruits of your apostles by the blood of St. James, grant we pray that your church may be strengthened by his confession of faith and constantly sustained by his protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. We carry always in the body the death of Jesus. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 to 15. Brethren, we have this treasure in 18 verses to show that the transit power belongs to God and not to us. We are fleeted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith as he who wrote, I believe, and so I spoke. We too believe, and so we speak. Knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus we raise us always with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extend to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 126. 1 to 2 AB, 2 CD to 3, 4 to 5, and 6. And the response is taken from Psalm 126, verse 5. And the response is, Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. When the Lord brought back the exiles of Zion, we thought we were dreaming. Then our mouth filled with laughter on our tongues songs of joy. 
Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Then the nations themselves said, What great deeds the Lord worked for them! What great deeds the Lord worked for us! Indeed, we were glad. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Bring back our exiles, O Lord, as streams in the south. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. They go out, they go out, full of tears, bearing seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back with a song, bearing their sheaves. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Gospel acclamation is taken from John 15, verse 16. Alleluia! I chose you from the world that you should go and be fruit, and that your fruit should abide, says the Lord. Alleluia. You will drink my chalice. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 20. From verse 20 to 28. At that time, the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to Jesus with her two sons, and kneeling before him, she asked him for something. And he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Command that these two sons of mine may sit one at your right hand and one had you left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the chalice that I am to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will drink my chalice, but to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. And when the ten heard it, they were indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever will be first among you must be your slave, even as the Son of Man came, not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us say something nice about this man we are celebrating today as in giving the profile of James. Remember in the list of apostles is listed among the first three showing how this man was of great importance. In fact, with his brother James, they were surnamed sons of thunder. In Matthew chapter 17, it was Peter, James, and John that saw the Lord transfigured before them. In Mark chapter 5, it was Peter, James, and John that watched the Lord raise the little girl from the dead. In Mark chapter 14, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with himself just a little further into the garden of Gethsemane and asked them to pray. Each of these three men would have a solid place in the future. Peter would become their leader. John would be the longest living apostle, would write the gospel, three episodes and the book of Revelation. But James would not live long enough to minister as much as the other two. His first distinction was to be the first martyr among the apostles. So we have this son of thunder, this man with an impulse in him, just like his brother who wanted fire to come down on the Samaritans who refused to accept Jesus. This man was coming from a family that had a sense of direction. And for that reason, he was ready to die for Christ. 
Oh, we see all this in the gospel passage of today. Salome came up to Jesus. Salome was one of those people providing for the needs of Jesus. So she had access to Christ. You know, like the way it is uh, with some of our parishioners who do provide for the material needs of our priests. There is that familiarity. There is a certain access they have to us. So they are able to make requests. They are able to ask for prayers at any time because they know they are doing something for us. They are doing something for God. And so they can come and say, Father, may you celebrate Mass for this intention and that intention. And of course, you have to celebrate because you know these people are instrumental in the spreading of the gospel. Salome is mentioned in Luke chapter 8 verse 1 to 3. Among the women who ministered to Jesus, so she was able to come to Jesus and say, Grant that these two sons of mine may sit one at your left and one at your right in the kingdom. Misplaced request. It doesn't mean that when you are doing something for God, that when you are working for God and serving the people of God, then you can ask for anything and everything, even what just displays your ambitious life. No, sorry. God says, you know what? This is my kingdom and this is how I operate. I am promising you something. You are not going to be given the places of honor because my kingdom is not what you are thinking. I know you are a woman of class. I know your children are children of class because you have been industrious and you think that being a Christian is keeping a certain class. I want to tell you there is a lot of suffering in doing so. I want to tell you, yes, they are going to drink of the cup that I am going to drink. Yes, they are going to suffer as I am going to suffer. And I am not saying they won't get a place of honor in heaven, but I want to let you know that's not the reason why they should follow me. The reward is bonus. The reason why they should follow me is that they are supposed to be men and women of service. That's it. And service sometimes may not even be recognized by others. They will pass by without even saying thank you for the role we are playing in their lives. They will even insult us. They will even gossip about us. That's exactly what happens in service. And we shouldn't even feel bad that all these things are happening because we are meant to serve. And the sons of Zebedee had to understand that their place is not in a sofa, is not in a chair, their place is in the field, in service. And James understood that. That's why he was able to die for Christ. But he had to understand his own weaknesses. He had to understand that he was an ambitious man and his ambitions had to be lowered down that Christ could shine in his life. And this is what James teaches us. If we are to be an example to the world out there, if we are to shine out to the world out there, we have to let Christ shine in us first and forget about our own ambitions and let Christ grow in our lives. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Tuesday to you and happy feast of Saint Jacob. Thanks be to God. This is my daily bread. Your very word. Spoken to me and I
Your bed. 